Hi there. This is going to be the first in uh, a series of recordings and uh, presentations on different tunes, different peebergs, which I'd like to make and to pass on uh, all the things that I've been taught uh, on these tunes and the ways, not only the ways that I play them and have been taught, but other ways of playing them as well that pipers who are watching this can make up their own minds on how they'd like to play the tunes. So the first tune I uh, will do is the Lament for McSwan of Roeg, a McRimmon tune, and a medium length tune, a beautiful tune. And I thought I'd do it because it's topical just now because it's set for uh, this year's tunes at uh, the major competitions and uh, it's one of the best of the McCrimmon tunes. So what I'd like to do is play the ground at this point and, uh, and then discuss a little bit about it afterwards. So the ground, like this. So that's the ground, and it's one of these tunes that basically there's only one way of playing the ground in most of the mainstream interpretations. There is the uh, Cameron interpretation of the tune, uh, which gives it this sort of flavour. In that phrase there but I'm going not an expert in that interpretation and I will leave that one to others more qualified than me to uh, pass that along. But one thing I would just like to say about the ground of the tune is that I feel it's very very important to play it in long phrases. What you hear is uh, people playing very often in in very short phrases in other words one bar is a phrase something like this that type of thing and I think it's very very important to make your phrases longer so first one would be Like that, that would be to up to the heher in there, the borrow, that would be your first uh, your first sort of marking of a phrase. 
So in other words, you move the tune along by making longer phrases. And I think that's quite important to do rather than playing the tune in little uh, segments. Now the next variation, uh, there's two basic ways of playing this, both of which are acceptable and one which I must say I much prefer. Uh, uh, the way that, that that is, is this. Like that. It's so fairly simple with the second low A, humbi hanto, a little bit shorter. Humble hanto he ho hado, humble hanto he ho. Like that. And again, make sure you don't play it in little segments. Let the thing. How you do this is that you perhaps don't dwell on each note quite as much as you might feel inclined to do at the ends of. Uh, all the bars dwell on the end of the phrase. In other words, like this. So that first line would consist of three phrases, uh, two of which I just played there. Now the other way of playing this, again perfectly acceptable, but I don't think it makes quite as much musical sense, is to make that low A that I was talking about earlier just a little bit longer. Like that, uh, to me it impedes the flow of the music a bit and if you look at the music, if you look at the score, you'll find that perhaps it doesn't really fit in with what's going on with the other uh, variations. Uh, then the doubling, nice and quick, well not quick but uh, lively. <laughs> Like that. At the ends of the line, it's a very nice little trick to mark those ends of the lines uh, with a little pause. Then the rest of the tune is very nice. Torlua. Thank you. 
and the other two lines are just like that. And then the doubling, a little bit quicker, a little bit brighter, but flowing along nice and smoothly. And lines two and three, of course, being pretty well exactly the same. That takes us, so both those variations are played what we would call the up style with the accent being on the on the second notes. In the uh, Krumlua singling doubling, it's most commonly played uh, with the doubling being in a round brevach way, in the conventional way, I suppose. And most people would say it's played down. So in other words, a uh, crew singling. Like that, uh, and that would be still in the up manner. Uh, so everybody would play that in in the up way. But in the Krumla doubling, there's two ways of playing it, and one, the most common one, is just the round regular brevet way. <laughs> like that, but I much prefer uh, it to be played up the way in a very relaxed, musical, fine, calm finish to the tune, which you don't often hear, but I think it's really wonderful. It goes like this. like that to make a nice, beautiful, calm finish to the tune. Now there's only one thing I'd like to say in ending this, which is to refer back to the second line of the ground and it's the first note, which is low A and written in almost every score as a low G. So when you come off line one, It's always written and mostly played like that. In actual fact, uh, if you look, I believe, in the cantrick, you'll find out that it's a low A there. And indeed, low A fits in perfectly with what goes on in all the other variations. So I believe that the low G there is actually an incorrect note. And it's much nicer and fits much nicer in with the scale. If you uh, if you play a low A there, so there we go. That's uh, McSwan of Roig, and I hope to follow this up with a few more tunes uh, uh, later on. And I hope that you will follow these uh, instructions, instructional recordings of tunes, and use them to your best advantage. Thank you very much. Bye bye.